Hello and welcome to Garden Chatter, where we connect gardeners, bloggers, and experts so we can all grow and learn together. Tonight we have Jan Bills on our show, and she's a landscape designer and garden garden designer in the uh, Detroit area. So we're going to check out what she's up to and get to talk to her about some of her uh, tips and tricks on gardening. And um, so Bren, my co-host Bren Haas, she says she uh, has some lakefront property over there in Ohio. <laughs> so what's happening? It's pretty wet in Ohio and I think in Michigan too. We've got some flooded fields and my meadow out front that I always show on social media is it flooded. It's it's flooded. We can take the canoe out there. It's oh, wow. <laughs> it's a lot of <laughs> so um, yeah. It's exciting and you're dry, right, Adam? Yeah, we um we're really hot and dry right now. Just blue skies and um, it's supposed to be 105 tomorrow, which is normal to have triple digit temperatures. But um, the last couple summers have been warm but not extreme so it feels like it's like oh my gosh it's just hot and some of the plants <laughs> I just got in the ground are feeling stressed and I'm feeling stressed. Uh, yeah water, water. well <laughs> I'm really excited about tonight's guest Jan Bill she's been on Twitter for a long time I think as long as me if not longer <laughs> and um, if, if you'd like to join in the conversation tonight you can use the hashtag garden chatter and if you happen to be watching this on the Google Hangouts if you click right up at the top you'll see a grid click the grid and a Q&A will come down on the side and please ask questions for our guests say hi um, let us know are you flooded <laughs> yeah, <we'd> Jan? <laughs> So, We're not flooded in Michigan. <laughs> no. Oh, good. Wow. Well, welcome to our show, Jan. It's great to have you on. Um, why don't we start by you could just tell us a little bit about the history of um, how you got from, because you were kind of in human resources and kind of corporate America job type, and then you went into garden design. So could you tell us a little bit about the, the story, that how that happened? Sure, I'd love to, and thank you guys so much for inviting me. I'm excited to be here. And so in 2006, I worked as an HR director in a medium-sized law firm that specialized in intellectual property. And so I knew that I wanted to do things differently in the second half of my life. And gardening was a passion, although I didn't know a lot about gardening. So I just... Uh, Let's see, I just developed my business plan and strategy to leave corporate America, so I stayed with my job for two years and would service clients in the evenings on weekends and took vacation time until the business built itself, and then I left, and now I'm doing it full-time, and it is my ninth year in business, and I really do love it. That's great. So it took you two years to, on the side to transition out till you, till you built it up enough. Exactly. Yes. Save some money. That always helps. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Have you been a gardener pretty much all your life? Well, I started gardening when I got married and bought our first home. So I really hadn't gardening, gardened. And I didn't come from a family that gardened. Actually, I always say my mom's deceased, but if she saw me now the way I roll around in soil, she would probably be saying, go take a shower and fix your hair. Because she was kind of a girly girl, so she was not one that liked to dig in the dirt. Yeah, and the name of your um, business is Two Women and a Ho. Yeah. And also, that's where people can find you on Twitter and probably Facebook as well. And how did how did that name come about? Was there a story behind that? Well, we do have a company in Michigan, a Michigan-based company called Two Men in a Truck. And so back when I was trying to think of a name, I knew about two men in a truck, and it just made sense because the other woman is actually my mother. So people always uh, always ask, well, who's the other woman? And But more importantly, they ask, who's the hoe? But So <laughs> the other woman is actually my mother, and it just made sense. So I trademarked the name, and I kept it a secret until it was all copyright protected and then just went forward with it, and it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to remember. It's a great name just because <laughs> women and a hoe. It's, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> maybe, what, what, uh, so what kind of services do you offer? What, what are you up to? 
Well, we do um, landscape design, installation, and maintenance, and I also do consultations where I walk around with clients and help them with their gardens, make recommendations, right plant, right place concept. So it's a lot of fun. We do a little bit of everything. Sounds like we're getting a little bit of that echo. Echo. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Friend, did you have any questions? <laughs> I like picking uh, Jan's brain about social media. She's really good. <laughs> Do you, uh, is somebody, if there's a gardener out there or a landscape person who's new to social media, mm -hmm. could you give them any tips? Oh gosh, I could give a lot of tips about social media. Um, with which platform specifically are you thinking, Bren? Well, you know, as a landscape designer yourself, what what is your favorite platform? Well, I love Facebook. So that's really where I start everything and then I spill over to the other platforms. But one one platform that I think is really underutilized is LinkedIn. So I get a lot of business from LinkedIn. There, there's professionals on there and they're usually the people that need our services. So that works really well too. So I always use Facebook as my hub and then everything spills over from there. Sounds good. I haven't done much with LinkedIn. So that's something, something to, to work on. Whoa. I guess I was wondering, um, could, what about, what is the job that you've been working on lately? Can you describe a landscape job that you just completed or you're currently working on? Oh goodness, yes, a lot. So today we take care of a really beautiful <laughs> uh, country club, golf country club here in Bloomfield Hills. And so we take care of all the gardens. And today, I don't know if you can see, I have purple all over my arms because I was spray painting, believe it or not. They like their stunning <laughs> alien spray painted purple. So yeah, they they like them. The members like them purple all season long. I know friends like. Wait 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 wait. <laughs> what is that? I don't even know what that is. Say it again. What? Well, alium is that big bulb. It's, oh. it's a spring bulb. And they're purple. yeah. Well, yeah. We, ha we have them at the club, so the members like those. They like them so much that I have to spray them purple after they fade. So, so I, they're like <laughs> dried. They're like a dry ball, and then you spray them to keep them purple. purple. Yes. You may be yeah. onto something. I have purple all over. <laughs> Not, I, can you see them? There's spots of yeah. purple everywhere. <laughs> so, well, that's just that's not a project. That was just something yeah. I did today. But we do we service a lot of the average homeowner. So we take out their old landscapes and put in new ones. Yeah, it's it's really really fun. And then we go in and we renovate existing landscapes. So perhaps if a homeowner is a little bit overwhelmed with weedy and they need mulch and they just need everything freshened up, our crew goes in and we take care of it. Sounds very cool. Sounds, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is very cool. The spray paint through me. <laughs> <laughs> through me too. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Whose idea was that? Yours or theirs? No, it was not mine because I think alium is a spring bulb. So when it goes, it goes. And but you know, so I did post it on Facebook. The picture of the so you can go on two women in a whole Facebook page and see the okay. picture of alium. Yeah. So I was wondering, like, you you probably go into a lot of uh, landscape jobs that are, I don't know, kind of horrendous from the owners or something. What, like, what kind of mistakes are people making? Well, I'll tell you a couple things mistakes that people make, I think, is that they put the wrong plant in the wrong place. The wrong plant in the wrong place. So they plant things too close to the house. And then they end up with half a tree or half a shrub because things can't grow into a home. 
Maybe since so, this echo is being so annoying, Dan, um, why don't we just try unplugging like our and see if the echo goes away. I just unplugged mine, too. I just unplugged mine, too. <laughs> oh, that echoed really bad. So. Yeah. Huh. Because I'm not sure why that echo keeps sure haunting us. <laughs> Very annoying. <laughs> well, it brings our yeah. conversation to a standstill. <laughs> I'm going to turn my volume down. I'm going to turn my volume down. Well, that's it. Try that. Try that. Okay, well, so. Uh, okay, well, so. That's a, it always feels like some kids are mimicking me when we have this echo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't really hear it too bad on this I end. Know. I mean, it's yeah. okay. it's Google. It's not perfect. Okay. Perfect. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Google. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see if we. Can Anyways. Continue. So I was thinking, if you could tell um some novice gardeners a thing or two or three, you would tell them like if you could yes yes. What would it? What would it be? What so one thing is so find the right plant in the right place. Yes. Read yeah. plant label. Read plant label. So they're there for a so reason. Mm -hmm. So if they say a plant's going to get 12 feet tall, you can bet it's going to get 12 feet tall. And then I would also and tell people also to tell people to design not only design from the outside, but design from the inside looking out because that's really important. Especially here in Michigan, where we spend so many months indoors because of the winter months. I know for me, I have to look outside and see something really beautiful. So when they're designing and they're thinking about where to put things, sit in their favorite chair, or stand at the window, maybe where they do dishes, and put something that's going to be really beautiful all season long. So just a little note on our... Um, Echo problem. Um, Bren, I just muted you, and I think um, there's no more echo. Is that correct, Jan? That is correct. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on, Bren. This has happened <laughs> before with other Hangouts I've done. So, so Bren, um, I don't know if there's any settings you can change or something, or try um, unplugging your mic, and or also you could. Um, one thing would be to leave the Hangout briefly, pop back in, and see if it changes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna unmute you. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, Grant. <laughs> you just have to laugh and try to figure this out. So anyway, because <laughs> we really can't talk when we we're echoing so badly. Um, all right, sounds good. Well, <laughs> I got all sidetracked there. Yeah. Wow. Well, let's just pause for a moment and um, wait till Brent comes back on. And hopefully that echo will go away. I've been trying to. We've had that come up just, and we don't. We never know when it's going to come up, and like quite where it's coming from. So we're trying to track that down so we can know what to do. Okay, um, I just popped another cough drop in my mouth, so that was good okay. timing. There you go. <laughs> and if we do uh, for the YouTube part, we can just edit this part out. Um, yeah. So hopefully Brent will pop on again. Anyway, one thing I was wondering is um, what are your some, some of your favorite plants that you're excited about? Is there some plants uh, you're just all jazzed up about right now? Yeah, so I'm always jazzed about hydrangea because they're a big thing here in the Midwest. They're wonderful bloomers, wonderful winter interests. So I love hydrangea, and I love the new drift roses. So if people aren't using the new drift roses in their gardens, they should. They're not your grandmother's roses, and they're just so beautiful. They bloom from spring until the first frost. And then I also, one of my other favorites is called a spilled wine wygelia, and it's just a little um, small ornamental shrub, but it adds wonderful color to the garden. So one of my favorite combinations is hydrangea, drift roses, and wygelia. I love them together in the gardens. So, um, and they're very easy, low maintenance plants. So they're, they're something that you should add to your garden if you have the opportunity. Oh, great. What was the third one you said? I'm not sure if I'm familiar with that. It's called Spilled Wine, Wygelia. 
And it's just, um, it only gets about two feet tall. It's kind of a mounding shrub, and it has a really nice dark leaf on it. And it does have a pink trumpet flower in spring, but we really love it for that dark foliage. Oh, so what, that, does it do in the, what does it do in the winter? Well, it's deciduous, so it loses its leaves in the okay. winter. But, you know, the hydrangeas, I love those because they do offer wonderful winter interest. Yeah. Um, there are definitely some hydrangeas around our area, but it's it's so hot. I don't think they like yeah. it quite as hot. They like more moisture. and So if you're on yeah. a or side of the house or something, so they definitely don't do too well in the hotter areas on the West Coast, I think. Right. I think that's true. Yeah. Looks like Bren's coming back. Yeah. I see her. Come on back, Bren. Hopefully you can not have any echoing. So you're just near the... Um, you're you're just not too far from Detroit, right? Just north of Detroit. Yeah, and I was wondering, is there? Have you seen? I mean, Detroit's definitely gone through some hard some hard times, and I'm wondering if in in the area, the greater Detroit area, if you're seeing some gardening trends or what what's happening as in that area. Yes, for sure, gardening trends in Michigan, and we've been doing this the whole time that I've been in business. Uh, we're removing more front lawns, and I know that's a big thing in California right now. They're giving tax credits to people that remove front lawns, but we're seeing that a lot. I mean, we always do that. We always bring the gardens out, and when you bring the gardens out into the front, then you can actually see them from the windows inside the home. So we've been doing that the whole time. I recently at my home reduced, all, so I have no more grass. I used to have just a little bit of grass, and now I have no more. I have just all gardens, and I love it, but I... I live in Royal Oak, which is a suburb of Detroit, and I have a small property, not like Bren, so it would be hard for Bren to eliminate all her lawn. But for for us with the um, small lots, it's just so much fun to take that sod out, and that we're seeing a lot more of where people are removing sod because it's really not a, a very sustainable practice to have sod. It requires a lot of resources. Yeah, I mean, it takes a lot more a lot more water than, mm -hmm. than some some plantings. Yeah, I'm. I have. Oh, I guess it's a little less than half an acre, and I still have some. Yeah, there's some grass that's going to be coming out. So in our in our back too, we're going to take out a bunch and put in a patio with, kind of mixed in with um, ornamental grasses and, mm -hmm. and some good perennials, uh, flowers. Yeah. Well, here's my favorite tip on removing sod. So if you want to remove sod instead of instead of actually removing it, like what I did with my front lawn, is I just laid some cardboard down and I mulched on top of it. And then come fall, autumn, when I'm not so busy with the business, I'll go back in and do my plantings. Because if you remove the sod, then you have the problem of disposing of it, which is a it's difficult to do. You can't take it to the trash. I mean, we take it to the dump, but for the average homeowner, it's hard to remove that sod. And then once you remove it, you have that gap because now you have to come back in and fill it with soil. So I just laid my cardboard down, put mulch on top of it. So while the summer's happening and I'm working in everybody else's gardens, it's decomposing. And it'll be a wonderful bed when I go to plant in the fall. Uh, yeah, it's very good. David Clark is uh, was making a couple comment comments earlier. Um, he said, "Nice combination ideas, and um, nice to be part of the event." And I know he we did a um, a no-till gardening with him earlier, and we were talking about layering and, and cardboard. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure he's giving a thumbs up if he's if he's watching. Um, I have a couple areas that I'm doing that too. I mean, in in the back where I'm going to put the patio in, I'm actually going to remove the sod and some of the dirt, and you know, come back with some gravel and and things to make a solid base. But there's a couple other areas where I'm putting down cardboard and just layering it. Um, some of that might have to wait, yeah, till the fall. It's just so kind of hot and dry right now that um, I don't have well, enough material to lay down. Yeah, we, we even do that all the time for clients that have a weed problem. So instead of having, a, instead of paying us to pull every weed in a really weedy bed, we just lay that cardboard down and we mulch on top of it and it remedies the problem so quickly. It's just, it's a beautiful thing. It's a great way to get rid of a weed problem. Right, you know, and the cardboard's free. It's plentiful, mm -hmm. and it just breaks down. I mean, earthworms. Do it up, Brand. Are you back with us with audio? Yes, I'm just scared to say anything. <laughs> no, nobody's that going. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> no. 
So trust me, Jan, I would love to have it where I didn't have to do too much mowing, but mm -hmm. I do enjoy lawn where I am. I can't imagine. It's kind of like a nice carpet in between, you know, all the different vegetable beds and things like that. But mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I have to ask you, what was there a new um, shrub out this year that you really enjoy? Well, we were just talking about that. So the things I love the most are those drift roses. Oh, I'm in love with drift roses. Yeah. Have you tried yeah. them yet, Bren? Oh, yeah. I just did a whole, um, it's about oh. 15 feet long. I've got about eight uh, limelight hydrangeas. Ooh. And below it, I put the coral, the coral drift below nice. it. Nice. So it's kind of like a big mass planting. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know what's nice? So my Three favorite plantings are to go with the hydrangea, then the spilled wine wygelia, then come in with the drift rose because I love that nice. contrast. Yeah, that spilled wine doesn't get real big, and it's so pretty with the hydrangea and the roses. Yeah. But my favorite drift is the sweet. I'm in love with the sweet. Which one's that? Is that like a light pink? Well, it's more, no, it's not like a, it's a pink, but it's not a light pink. But what I love about it is that it has that really full bloom on it. It's so gorgeous. And it has a, a nice scent to it, too. So you have to check Very out cool. the sweet. It's my favorite. I will. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to check that out, those out, too. Um, Lisa, who uh, is a houseplant guru on Twitter, said, uh, Jan, we need to meet since we live in the same part of the same state. We do. Where does she live? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't um, exactly sure, but... She's in, like, the, she's in, like, the Livonia, Livonia area. Oh, actually, yes. um Yeah, and um, actually... I know you're part of the um, M MLNA, the Michigan Landscape Nursery Association, mm -hmm. in their magazine that just got, I just got it today in the mail. She has a nice little article in there. So. <laughs> oh, I think I have it right behind me. I'll have to look yeah. for it. <laughs> She's in there. Good cool. job, Lisa. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to read it. And Adam, you got to come up to Michigan because I tell you, even though I'm an Ohioan, I just love those Michigan gardens and the farms. It's beautiful. You you guys rock. You know you we know do. what you're doing. <laughs> we do. I love Michigan. Michigan gets a bad rap. It's beautiful. I wouldn't change our seasons for the world. It's so right. lush around here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I would love to come for a visit. Absolutely. Yeah, you should come. <laughs> So Brent and I, you know, we do this garden chatter partly just to get information out and try to get gardeners, you know, inspired and out gardening. And so you get to talk to a lot of, you know, homeowners that, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe they're novice gardeners a bit and then they, they hire you. So I'm wondering what, what are some of the barriers or the, the main barriers that you see that keep uh, these homeowners from, you know, kind of doing the work themselves? Why, you know, why are they hiring you? What, what happened? Well, they're just busy, busy working with their lives, and we we did have a really wet season, and they just can't get to their gardens, and they want to have beautiful gardens, but they just, it, it's kind of like a housekeeper, where you just don't have time to clean your house anymore, so you hire someone to do it, and I really, you know, when I started the business, I had no idea that there would be such a demand for this, but, you know, people want to keep their properties looking nice. Um, baby boomers want to stay in their homes. They don't want to downsize, so they want to keep their lovely gardens. And they just figure they'll pay somebody to do it. And it's it's great because those weeds just keep coming back, so it's job security. Yeah, job security. <laughs> it is. It's just really great. Yeah, I mean, I figured that's probably the main reason, um, just time and energy. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know if maybe there was, you know, some lack of knowledge or something else that... Um, well, there's definitely that, too. Yeah. I mean, and you know all the plants and the right plant mm -hmm. in the right place and everything. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Are, you, um, are you seeing more people asking for uh, vegetables in their landscape and tips on that? I know I followed you last year. You had some really cute raised beds mm -hmm. that you were showcasing mm -hmm. on your uh, Facebook page. Yes. So, yeah, we do see. But I tell people with regards to vegetables... So I am the worst vegetable gardener in the world. I cannot grow vegetables for anything. I have like a 4x4 four four and it's pathetic. 
<laughs> because all the all the rabbits eat it and the birds eat it and chipmunks eat everything and I never really get a good harvest. I don't know. And my next door neighbor grows a ton of vegetables, so it just must be me. But I always tell people with veggies that you know just start small because if you start big, you'll get overwhelmed with it and then you may never go back to it again. So only plant what you're going to eat because we have really great farmers markets here. Mm -hmm. So instead of planting a whole bunch of stuff, plant what you eat and then anything else you can go support your local farmer at our farmers markets. So yeah, growing food is a big thing um, here, but uh, you know, really, I think people have to just do it as they can do it without getting too big because it, it's work. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I totally get that. I'm overwhelmed right now. I've got you know all these things I want to get going and I feel like I haven't planted some areas like I wanted mm -hmm. to and it's just a matter of time and energy so it definitely mm -hmm. but you know it, there are a lot of techniques and tips like the cardboard and there's there's a lot of things that you can do that can start to help you know save time and energy so yeah Rick you know, is well, uh, getting that collection of knowledge to make things yeah. go. I'll have to learn some of that. <laughs> Because I just can't grow big <laughs> vegetables. <laughs> Might be the varieties. Don't be hard on yourself. <laughs> I, I don't know. It'll, just a regular old tomato. I don't yeah. think I got one tomato last year. The birds got them before I ever did. <laughs> so I don't well, know. I, thank goodness I for, uh, <laughs> what is it, the Eastern, Eastern Market? Is that the one downtown? Well, the Eastern, and I have one right in my community, Royal Oak Farmers Market, which is fabulous. So, okay. yes. Thank God for the local farmers. <laughs> yep. Keep you fed. Uh huh. <laughs> well, let's see, Brenda. Do you have any last questions or comments, or if anyone wants to pop a comment on here, we had um, Lisa and David on. So if they have any questions for Jan, um, that'd be great, and we'll start to wrap it up. Right, kind of a a um, walkie audio. So how do you um? How will you be winding down the season when, I mean, do you, do you don't do the landscape all year, like, you know, winter yeah. comes and, you know, you're inside and I know you do a lot of speaking gigs during the winter time and early spring, but after that, what do you do, like, you know, your downtime? Well, I'm really excited because I just recently signed a contract with St. Lynn's Press, so this winter I'm going to be writing my first book. Very cool. Yeah, so I'm very excited <laughs> about that. So that's, I think, is what I'm going to be doing this winter is doing a lot of writing. Very cool. Yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm very excited about that. And then really the season is not all that short because we're designing even in the winter and we're lining stuff up for the next year. So it's not that short of a season at all in Michigan, even though we're snowed in. So how big of a crew do you employ? I mean, imagine you must have a number of number of help helpers. I do. Yeah, there's actually nine of us. Um, so I have a landscape designer on staff, and then there's eight more of us that go out and do the actual work. Very good. So keep busy. Um, yeah, I asked you earlier what your book was going to be about, and she can't divulge much, uh, any details, so she said it was it was gardening. Yes. It's got to get much more. <laughs> that's all I can that's say good. for now. But that's that's very exciting. Congratulations. Um, Thank you. But but you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna give us a scoop first though, right, Jan? <laughs> yes, I am. Um, absolutely, Brent. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Staying tuned as as it comes along. So yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and um, wrap it up. So thanks so much, Jan, for um, joining us, taking time oh, out of your you. day. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Okay. Take care. Okay. You too. Bye, Brent.